Now we can post-process the cell center values of the primary unknowns to produce useful visualizations. Instead of double-clicking on results in the workbench window, we will double-click solution to reopen Fluent and use its post-processor. With Fluent open, we will first look at the velocity vectors to better understand the flow. Select the Results tab, click Vectors, and select New. In the pop-up window, name this Velocity Vectors. Ensure that it is set to Vectors of Velocity and that Velocity Magnitude is selected. Under Surfaces, select Interior Surface and click Save Slash Display. You can then close the pop-up window. From this plot, you can see an oblique shock coming from the tip of the wedge. Behind the oblique shock, the velocity decreases as expected. The vectors also show that this oblique shock has turned the direction of the flow. The flow can similarly be visualized using contour plots. We can start by visualizing the Mach number of the domain by selecting Contours under the Results tab and clicking New. In the pop-up window, name this Mach Contours. Change this to be Contours of Velocity and ensure Mach Number is selected. Ensure no surfaces are selected and click Save Slash Display, and you can close the pop-up window as before. Here, we can more clearly see the oblique shock. Most of the flow domain is close to the free stream Mach number of 3, but the shock decreases it to around 2.2. This matches expectations of an oblique shock, as the Mach number decreased. The flow is still supersonic behind the shock, however. We can similarly visualize the pressure contours. Again, select Contours under the Results tab and click New. Name this Pressure Contours. Change this to be Contours of Pressure and ensure Static Pressure is selected. With no surfaces highlighted, click Save Slash Display and close the window. This plot shows that the oblique shock functions as a compressive wave as expected. The pressure increases rapidly across the shock. Another useful visualization is total pressure contours. We can create these as before. Name this Total Pressure Contours. Ensure they are contours of pressure and change it to make sure Total Pressure is selected. And click Save Slash Display and close the window. While the pressure increases across the shock, we can see that the total pressure decreases. This is caused by losses across the shock because the flow is not isentropic, as well as small numerical errors. Finally, we can plot contours of total temperature. Create a new contour plot as before. Name this Total Temp Contours. Select Contours of Temperature and make sure Total Temperature is selected. And click Save Slash Display and close the window. We can see that this is nearly constant across the whole domain. There's a small amount of variation near the right boundary, 
but this is on the order of 1 Kelvin, and is caused by numerical errors. This is a useful check that energy is conserved in the model. It is also useful to investigate the Mach number as we move from left to right across the domain. Start by selecting Create under the Results tab and selecting Line Slash Rake. Name this Plot Line. With the type set to Line, we can select the endpoints to draw a horizontal line across the flow domain at y equals 0.4. This means setting the x values to span from 0 to 1.5. Click Create and close the window. Now, under the Results tab, select XY Plot and click New. Change the name to Mock Plot. Under Y Axis Function, select Velocity and choose Mock Number. Ensure x-axis function is direction vector, and under surfaces, select plot line. Click save slash plot to view the plot, and close the window. In this plot, we can see the decrease in Mach number as expected. It appears to be fairly jagged however, particularly in these sections. We can improve this resolution by increasing the sampling points. In the tree, expand surfaces, right click on plot line, and click edit. Change the type to rake, and increase the number of points to 100. Click save, and close the window. Back in the tree, expand plots and XY plot, right click on mock plot and click edit. In the new window, click save slash plot to visualize the plot with the new line. And close the window again. We can see that this now plots the mock number at each sampling point. Highlighting over the final point, we can see that the Mach number is around 2.24. This is pretty close to our pre-analysis expectation. With this completed, make sure to save your project. If prompted, select Save for Current and Future Calculations to preserve your work. Click OK.